Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Well, hello everybody. I feel like a Price is Right model because here I am on this wonderful sofa, but uh, just thought this was a great place to start this video. I'm George the Antique Nomad and I'm at the Sturgis Antique Mall. This is where I did the second YouTube video I ever did. And what I'm doing is a series of short subjects where we go through a section of a place we've been and we start looking at the kinds of things that they have that are different from what they had before. And we talk a little bit more about prices, including on that Federalist sofa I was just sitting on. It's been nicely recovered and it's priced at $8.50. And for, you know, if you think about what a sofa in a store costs, that's actually a pretty reasonable price. Now, the last time that uh, we spoke, I was in this space. And I'm just going to take a minute here because there's a couple of really fun things, including this. I love this gal. She was on TV when I was a kid. Pat Collins, the hip hypnotist. And she would go to Vegas and they would film her and she would hypnotize people in the audience and have them come on the stage and do crazy things. So uh, that that's just a fun, silly memory for me. Some of you folks probably saw that in the early 80s. Now, this place really likes mid-century and related things. So the head vase here this one is priced at 35. Their tags are a little inscrutable, but she's got her jewelry and 35 is a perfectly fine price. They had these holes in them so they could put ribbons through them if they wanted to dress them up. Uh, these were made in Japan. These are the type that they had around 1960. Now this gal needs an earring or two. They can be found. They're just little faux pearls, but they've got 65 on this one. So the other one is definitely the deal, especially because she has eyelashes that come out. So if you're comparing one to another, that would have been the one to have. Now let's go down the aisle here and see what else we can spot for people. So we see the swans a lot, but this is Sooner glass out of Oklahoma, and this is what the vases look like. It's interesting with all the interest in swung vases and crimped vases, I don't think a lot of people have caught on to those yet. That one is priced at $30. One thing you'll notice in this store is a lot of East Lake era furniture and 1880s and 90s. And that's because there was such a boom in this part of the country and so many settlers moving to this part of the Midwest in that period of time. Also, people were getting into nicer houses. Pioneer era was over and so they could have better furniture. Uh, this is interesting. It almost looks like dice with the number five in it. It's fun to look at the details in these old pieces of furniture. And I think that's what appeals to a lot of the people who decorate this way. Um, this one's priced at 950. It's got the bed as well. Now I have to say my eye goes more towards this. This is an art deco or art modern piece. And this one was probably made by somebody at home. Yes, you can see because they use this very wide grain, which is not something they usually used in furniture. They like to hide the grains in the commercial furniture. But this is really neat and it rolls around. So this would be a great little cocktail bar. And for $195, I think that's a perfectly fine price for that. I rather like that piece. And then this is interesting too. This is a very old dentist chair. They just got a couple of uh, truckloads of new stuff and they get really interesting things. Um, this one's priced at $250 and apparently this is where all the adjustments were in the back. I'm sure that was a horrible place to be back then before anesthesia was really perfected for dental work. Here's a tale of two kinds of ivy. We have Franciscan ivy as seen on I Love Lucy, made in California, all embossed and then hand painted under the glaze. And then Metlocks, their competitors down the road, they didn't do the embossing, they just did free painting of ivy. And so those are the two different uh, pieces. The prices have really come down on these patterns. They were very popular about 30 years ago. Now is a good time to collect if you like it. Only $22.50 on the teapot in the Metlocks, which used to be $45. And this whole set is $210. 
I remember when I started in the business, you would have gotten $20 a piece just for the plates. So now is a good time to get into those things if you're interested because there's good collections coming onto the market that have already been assembled. Now, on the other hand, if you like pop culture era, well, poor Ernest, he's not with us anymore, but I've actually never seen the doll before. I'm used to seeing Pee Wee Herman from this era. Oh, that didn't sound like Ernest. Let's try again. <laughs> I think he just caught himself. One more try. There you go. Well, what he's really saying is if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do because if you do so, they'll be able to click the bell and be notified of future videos. Plus, it helps us with YouTube. It lets them know people are interested, and we really appreciate that. This is a neat space here because it's got a lot of primitives and a lot of farm stuff. And there is definitely interest in this, not just here, but in all parts of the country because farmhouse decorating is really big. Now, maybe this doesn't look like Magnolia's kind of farmhouse decorating, but you take elements of this and put it into that and that's how it pops. And if you ever watched her, uh, I'm talking about Joanna Gaines, if you ever watch her shop, that's how she shops. She goes to places like this and looks for things that she can highlight. Um, so for example, old tractor seats with the names in them are actually being used as wall decor or made into chairs or bar stools. They use them as wall decor just like you would see a jure in a modernist house. Here's one from Buckeye over here from Akron, Ohio. And those price about I think both of these are priced at $195. That is definitely a price I've sold these pieces at before. So that is not an unrealistic retail price. Um, I think if we can sneak out here. One thing, sorry, making the cameraman go backwards. Thank you so much for your help, by the way. One thing to always, whoo, there we go. One thing always, always worth buying are sleigh bells. People love old sleigh bells, especially the older the better. And you can kind of decide by the number of bells how much they're worth. This one has quite a few. One of them needs repair. And because of that, they have it priced at 150 And that's a nice old set. You will see more modern sets, but they sell as well. So sleigh bells are definitely a thing to look for. Now back here, there's just a wealth of really pretty mid-century ceramics and glass. And when I say mid-century, I mean it dates from that time. These are obviously not all mid-century styles. We have another head base here. This was the one that was based on uh, Lana Turner, and, but it has eyebrows. Hers never grew back after her uh, role that she shaved them for in one of her movies. But we've got nice pieces of Fenton in the Burmese and the Cranberry. There's the old Hull Royal Woodland Cornucopias. These are only $22 each now. Those would be fun against a gray wall in one of these new design decor rooms where they're doing a lot of grays. Uh, we see pieces like, oh, even silly things like only $8 for the Home Co. Pixie set of three. That's actually very inexpensive for that now because a lot of people are thinking these are very cute. So I'll probably have to get those. Uh, there's a selection of Roseville. I just sold a Roseville teapot lately. This one is Zephyr Lily. This one's 180. That's a little more collectible pattern than the open rose that I sold, although they're both pretty in their own uh, different ways. And then over here we have McCoy, we have the turtle at $45 in the old color green. And then you can see how they took the same form and did it in this color green when that was in style. But what's unusual next to it is this crazy silly monkey planter. Our cameraman is not really a big monkey fan, but I just had to show this anyway. And that has a bottom that appears to be something made by Shawnee, even though it has no mark because of this dry foot in the center. I hate to say it, but I think that has to come with me. <laughs> a silly thing, but whimsy sells these days. And you know, there's a good reason it should. I mean, look at all these fun salt and pepper shakers, for example. It's just, uh, it's just something happy and, and a fun distraction from mundane things like kitchen work. Uh, I think they've got $4 on the tomatoes, only $4 on the so these little mice, and they have the corks, so those are old, 1950s. 
So the prices are good on, I have to say, on several things in this space. And I, you know what, I'll probably come back to this. So I think I'll set him down and not carry him with me. But I know where he is. In this space, they've mixed a lot of carnival. Now I get a lot of questions about carnival glass through the years, and especially because there's a lot of these fall colors here. The early pieces like this Fenton bowl here have a very soft satiny carnival glass. That one, is the pedestal bowl in the orange tree pattern is priced at 155. But then when you see these that are a little more shiny, but they look like depression glass, those are 1950s. It's when they started to have noticed that people were collecting Carnival. So the depression glass companies wanted to extend the life of their line and they started doing them in Carnival. And then that led to the old companies like Fenton and Imperial reissuing Carnival glass, which had a very shiny feel and look to it. We're going to go look for some other stuff to show you, but in the meantime, I did want to say thank you very much to the members who help sponsor our channel. If you are interested in being a member, you can find out about member benefits by going to the join button and clicking that if you see that, or going to the membership link in the description, and it'll tell you more about what that involves. I see another room off to our left so i guess let's go that way oh, you want to go this way okay that's right orderly that that helps we want to make sure we show you folks at least a little taste of all of this because this is a big place and over here we have oh well you know me and hats we've got to look at these i think part of the fun with hats is that not so many people wear them now so they're just for fun or to hang on a wall as decoration some people will wear them for dress sometimes for little girls tea parties a lot of these are small but this is only five bucks it's a michael torre from southern california until jackie kennedy became the first lady and she didn't really wear hats a lot of the time the millinery industry in this country was a big deal and women had hats for all occasions they might have a fur hat to go with their fur coat, for example. This one is priced at $18 in that interesting swirl there. Paris and New York, these are 1950s vintage, back when people had different ideas about fur than a lot of folks do now. And you can kind of tell by the materials, this one's a little more synthetic, so this is going to be 1960s. This was to give you the appearance of having a big bouffant if you hadn't grown one yet. And the bouffant hairstyle was the other thing that really killed the hat industry. So uh, that's why most of what we see that are vintage American made are before 1965 approximately. Very pretty, very basic Victorian blown glass pink apparent. This is actually what they call a Rubina Verde because it goes to a green color. Now this might fluoresce under a black light. I don't have a big enough one to show you, but if it does, that could pop and really be an interesting piece. You hear a little bit of whirring in the background. They are redoing a part of the area to accommodate more merchandise, so uh, there'll be more to see. A lot of pretty art glass there in the case. I will point these out because these are something that we see in the recent past. This is Zolne and this is the Eosin glaze. These were made in Hungary and they originally made them about 1900, but we were cut off from Hungary because of the Soviet occupation. And then in the 1980s and 90s, we see it come back into the market here. Those two little pieces are priced about somewhere in the 85 to 100 dollar piece range but you will see that sometimes in estate sales and yard sales now and not everybody realizes that it was a big thing so sometimes you'll find a bargain out there here's another apern and this one is a pretty blue this one appears to be fenton and it's 275 and that's not a bad price for what it is it seems like with the reinvigoration of the art glass market lately that there are people interested in those big showy pieces again. So let's see what is around this corner. And oh, I, I know what I'd like to show actually is right here I noticed that this is a half off space. So this is a quick moment to be able to talk about what do you look for when you're looking quickly in a half off space? Well, 
First of all, what were the original prices? This cafe piece is only going to be $4. This is 1930s, it's restaurant wear. Well, that tells me that the prices were pretty good to begin with, so anything you see here is gonna probably be a good deal at half off. So then I'm looking for, do I have a collector? Do, is there still an audience? I always like the green Metlocks Provincial. This is only $4.50. This probably would sell for about 20 online even these days. There's a couple of other pieces here that look older, but there's also a lot that's just sort of, it's old, it's vintage, but it isn't necessarily wildly collectible. Now this one, on the other hand, this baking dish, it's $4 and you can see it's got very early sort of a seal for no stick. And this one is made in USA. I believe that is a Pyrex piece. So there are things that you will see. Uh, there will be bargains in this space. It would be worth coming back and looking a little bit longer. And the one thing I know I'm gonna grab is this. This is Triple X Root Beer. And I'll bet they don't know anything about this. I have no idea how this got here. This is a chain in that was in the Seattle area in the 1950s until about 1990. And I used to go to it as a kid. And this is a bargain at $1.75. So I'm going to take that with me to the West Coast. I'm George the Antique Nomad. Please check me out on the social media and links you see in the description and we'll have a, another chance to see a little bit more of this place and tell you some specific things about prices and items. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!